Us. Good morning. What's up? Uh, how are you all doing? Hope you're doing very well. I'm very excited today because I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite bands of all time. Probably the the best hard rock band of all time. The mighty, the amazing, the fantastic Led Zeppelin. And it it makes sense to jump into uh, Led Zeppelin today because yesterday, the day before yesterday, uh, did Killing Joke and you might know that uh, Jazz and Youth did the, the great uh, symphonic uh, Led Zeppelin project. And also uh, Jimmy Page is has been a, is a huge fan of uh, Killing Joke as well. So it's a nice little uh, sort of segue into Led Zeppelin. But this is a tough one. Why is it tough? I'll tell you why it's tough because I am going to do the ranking thing. And as you know, I don't take the ranking uh, sort of too seriously. That's my mantra. Don't take the ranking too seriously. And especially with Led Zeppelin, because if you remember when I did uh, Thin Lizzy and Killing Joke, I did say that both classic bands, but when you sort of take a closer look at the discography, there's some sort of a little bit patchy uh, records, albums, LPs in there. But with Led Zeppelin, ho, 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 I mean, there isn't a bad record at all. And uh, well, there's sort of reasons for that, isn't there? I mean, their career was sort of sadly uh, truncated, wasn't it? So we, we don't know uh, what they would have done in the 1980s. So obviously they're final studio LP proper uh, came out in 1979 so 10 years 69 to 79 what a legacy I mean amazing band and for me we sometimes have these sort of little silly debates on the internet when we're bored and they'll be a bit tipsy about things all Black Sabbath uh, versus Led Zeppelin <laughs> it's a tough one last time uh, someone asked me that I saw I said Led Zeppelin I think, in a way, uh, Led Zeppelin are, are sort of heavier uh, than Black Sabbath. Now, obviously, Led Zeppelin don't have the sort of bludgeoning uh, Iomi riffage going on, but they're heavier in a different way, they're sort of more dynamic, and they know how to sort of do the light and shade and the variation. And I think they're sort of better songwriters than uh, creators of moods and atmospheres and just power without necessarily having sort of bulldozing uh, sort of riffs they're almost sort of like classical music in a way and so well anecdotes not really I, I've not never sort of saw them live or anything but they're definitely one of the first sort of bands that became one of my favorite when I was about 11 12 when I had uh, tapes of some of the albums and I managed to buy a couple of the records that was exciting went to buy. I think I bought Led Zeppelin 2 and 4 I think it was uh, back in when I was sort of 11 12 years old that was really exciting buying those records and uh, been I've, lo I've, I've loved them s since I was a kid I still love them now I play the records regularly one of my most listened to bands and so it's a bit tricky it's been a bit tricky to rank them but what do we say we don't take the ranking too seriously but it's got to be done so shall we get to it yes let's get to it so from worst to best this is just sort of me opinions and um, they're all a lot of them are sort of interchangeable really because they're so close so sort of, it's hard to pick your favorite kid isn't it if you have uh, kids and let's get let's get started let's get started so the worst the worst Led Zeppelin uh, record LP in my opinion is the final studio LP of course I'm talking about in through the outdoor from 1979 great hypnosis artwork it came in the sort of brown paper bag I don't have the paper bag probably threw it away 
uh, this is a Japanese pressing actually and then there was lots of variations well wasn't there they sort of took I think it's six it's six different sort of uh, variations of the cover this is the one I've got it's great great artwork isn't it but uh, of course it starts off with uh, in the evening what a classic sort of old school um, a big big Led Zeppelin song big stomper big riff uh, big big mood big atmosphere um, the other day I was watching uh, some the footage from Nebworth 1979 sort of right at the tail end of uh, their career and they still had it and the performance of In the Evening oh, from Nebworth is absolutely amazing but you've got to bear in mind when they recorded this um, Jimmy Page addicted to heroin John Bonham sort of ravaged by the booze a little bit and of course he he'd sort of be he passed away not long after and then of course um, Robert Plant was sort of still grieving the, the death of his sort of young son when they put this record record out but uh, it is a good record I mean it's just worth it for for in the evening really isn't it hot dog don't really like that song too much people like that sort of um, confused me a bit hot dog sort of 50s rock and roll song but it makes sense doesn't it because I suppose that's the sort of music that the lads was sort of grew up on so it sort of does make sense that they would do a sort of 1950s style uh, rock and roll song let's have a little look in the evening southbound Suarez full in the rain I like that song and uh, Carousel Ambra All My Love that's a great song I think didn't All My Love's on the is it All My Love on the uh, symphonic Led Zeppelin let me know I think it is but uh, yeah it's got, this is going to have to be at the, the bottom of the heap but it's still a great record of course that uh, Coda sort of record odds and odds sods came out of that I'm not going to include that it's not a, a sort of real proper uh, studio LP is it oh, that, that confused me too when I was a boy I got easily confused when I was a kid still do now a bit so why what is this code i thought they're broken up but it's an odds and sods uh sort of compilation isn't it? i think once once some of the songs meant to go on a uh, in through the outdoor i forget didn't google that but uh that's me sort of least favorite uh led zeppelin record so let's get to the next one back to 1976 again another hypnosis uh, design hypnosis great aren't they this this black thing it's called the object isn't it and apparently so it's sort of object on the back the big the sort of black object and it was, was supposed to sort of represent Led Zeppelin apparently and you, you could feel their presence through this black object and that's why well the album's called presence and again um, when they were recording this Robert he'd had a car accident and he, he he recorded his vocals in a wheelchair amazing and uh, to be honest with you this is the sort of album that I'm I'm least familiar with all of the others are sort of really ingrained in my brain of course I do know this record sort of pretty well but uh, it's definitely sort of my least um, familiar of all the of the sort of the whole bunch but Achilles Last Stand ho, 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 what a masterpiece nobody's fault but mine great song one thing about this record is the production dry dry as a bone uh, it could almost be a sort of Steve Albini sort of produced record it's really dry but it sort of works actually quite like it and uh, I think this year one of me uh, goals should be to spend a bit more time uh, with this record because uh, yeah I should do that shouldn't I but Achilles Last Stand amazing it's one of sort of Led Zeppelin's best songs but as a whole body a piece of work as a as a, as a record as an LP um, it's not quite as good as some of the ones that are going to be coming up so 1976 presence good record next this is when it sort of starts to get a bit silly really because uh I'm looking at the record next I'm sort of like why is that there but let's get it out shall we the first record 
1969. Oh, this is a heavy record, isn't it? From 1969. Led Zeppelin 1. This is an older, oh, this is a sort of really older German pressing. Look at the lads. Looking very young there, especially uh, Robert. Looks very young. And of course, this record, it's still very blues rock, a lot of blues rock, and a lot of cover versions, or cover versions or sort of things they sort of uh, pinched. Can I, can I say that? Uh, we're not sort of going to go into the court cases and all that. Uh, but Willie Dixon, of course, when I was a kid, I had no idea who sort of Willie Dixon was. And it does say, doesn't it? I, I mean, it says Willie Dixon. You shook me is Willie Dixon song. Um, I can't quit you, baby. But I didn't, I sort of didn't know um, who uh, Willie Dixon was. And there's another one kind of taken from a Howling Wolf song, isn't it? Is it, babe, I'm going to leave you? Or sort of taken from uh, a Howling Wolf song. Interesting as well. And see, another thing I wouldn't have known when I was a kid, and I sort of know now that I've sort of expanded my musical horizons a little bit. You know that band Pentangle, folk band, old British folk band, Bert Jansch, Bert Jansch, however you pronounce it, guitar player. Uh, Black Mountainside was, was sort of definitely taken um, from some of his, one of his pieces. It's amazing. It's good, and it? it's good to sort of what you what you sort of learn as you sort of get older. I would never have known that when I was a kid, but heavy, especially communication breakdown. That was a, that must have been quite a sort of shocking song at the time. It's fast, isn't it? Really fast song. And what else? Good times, bad times. Very sort of 60s sounding pop song, but very sort of heavy pounding beat. For me, some of the bluesy sort of numbers, they sort of meander on a sort of little bit. I sort of find the attention sort of uh, wandering a little bit during those songs. But obviously, classic song songs on this record. It's a great album. Uh, it's kind of sort of weird to put it down so low. But what do you do when you've got such a sort of amazing discography? You have to put it somewhere. So that's where it's going. But obviously, a masterpiece and a taste of what was to come next all oh, people might be a bit sort of miffed at me for putting this one down solo let's go back to 1975 double lp with the sort of amazing artwork taken in, in new york wasn't it an old building in new york oh it's heavy i've got, still got a broken wrist a bit heavy yes of course i'm talking about physical graffiti with the sort of amazing uh, packaging now I've got a little bit of a quibble with this record and I do think it's a little bit bloated just a little bit bloated it could have been a single LP what do you reckon I mean there's so many obviously there's so many sort of classic songs on it just sort of go through the this is the insert here we can sort of look at the track list custard pie the rover in my time of dying nice doomy slow song house of the holy trap on the foot of course, Kashmir, one of the best best Led Zeppelin songs of all time. I was reading the other day, someone asked someone asked uh, uh, Tony Iommi, uh, from obviously from Black Sabbath, uh, what was the question? What what uh, great sort of rock song uh, do you wish you had written? And he, he answered, uh, Kashmir by Led Zeppelin. There you go, a little sort of tidbit for you there. Moving on, so this is when for me, it, side three and side four, obviously, let I me mean, look at the track list. There are some great songs, but I don't know. I think, wouldn't it have been better to have this, the song sort of rearranged and put out as two single LPs? Would that have worked better? What do you think? No, sort of, this often gets put at the top of sort of uh, Led Zeppelin ranking and it is their sort of magnum opus isn't it it's the only sort of double LP they made but just as I said a little bit bloated but it has got some of their best songs on it what do you do it's got to go somewhere and that's where I put it 1975 physical graffiti yes masterpiece really isn't it 
even though I did say it's a bit bloated. Uh, but what do you do? Well, we're moving into the last few, aren't we? And this is where it sort of it does get really ridiculous because these four records, all of them, uh, are sort of really part of me. I sort of love every song on every one of these records. I think. I mean, let's have a look at this one first, shall we? Now, this also. I remember buying this when I was sort of 12 years old and just thinking what an amazing sort of looking record and uh, Gayfold sorry it's a little bit of glare there brilliant Gayfold Gayfold sleeve looks amazing and then of course you've got the sort of four symbols which also sort of intrigued me when I was a kid the four symbols each representing sort of one member I mean, just look at the track list. I mean, it, this is flawless. When someone says, name me a flawless rock record point of this thing here, it's, I mean, it is quite unbelievable. Black Dog, have, what a riff. That is one of the sort of top riffs of all time. Rock and Roll, the Battle of Evermore. Now, when I, when I was a kid, I didn't know it probably says somewhere on the on the liner notes but I never even bothered to read it but I, I, I just thought it was uh, Robert Plant sort of singing with himself but it's not is it and of course years later I sort of found out it's Sandy Denny and Fairport Convention I love Fairport Convention and so I, now I can listen to this for sort of fresh ears it's sort of in, injected uh, sort of a new bit of excitement for me sort of listening to to sandy rob because sandy denny one of the best voices ever i love fairport convention i love i've got the sandy denny i'm not going to reach up i've got a sandy denny sort of box out there i love sandy denny so this song means a sort of means a lot to me now the battle of more still in heaven yeah we know it's sort of overplayed it's been it's played to death we you know it's like smoke on the water and free bird but you cannot deny it is a classic that when that guitar solo kicks in I still get sort of uh, even I just I just said it and I got sort of goosebumps 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 can you see it I've got goosebumps just sort of thinking about the guitar solo. that's powerful isn't it and then side two Misty Mountain Hop four sticks going to California and then when the levee breaks John Bonham oh, what one of the sort of heaviest not if not the heaviest and best sort of rock drummers ever and that that drum beat hasn't it been sampled quite a bit i think it has it's uh wouldn't be surprising it's such a great great beat and a great groove on that song flawless record couldn't decide where to place it could have gone at number one could have gone number two but it's number four four at number four now next this is also one of the ones that i did go out and managed to sort of spend my pocket money on and uh yes led zeppelin to another mark no, another flawless record from front to back um that riff from whole lot of love it never every time you put, i put it on it sort of never fails to sort of like just delight me it's such it's just brilliant but when i was a kid i was also sort of bit I didn't like it goes off into that sort of jam, that sort of psychedelic jam, doesn't it? I was always, as a boy, I was sort of disappointed with that. I wanted that sort of the, the heavy riff to sort of keep going, and it didn't. But now, as a grown up boy, I sort of totally appreciate that freak out. What is and what should never be? Lemon Song, ooh, saucy lyrics, minus five points for the saucy lyrics on the Lemon Song. Thank you. Nice ballad. Heartbreaker another one of the top riffs and uh living loving made rager ramble on emotional song uh moby dick of course when they played that live they had john bonham's 25 minute guitar solo and bring it on the home what a, what a way to sort of finish off a record masterpiece heavy also from 1969 and uh, people are always gone about Black Sabbath being the sort of heaviest band, but for me, this is sort of just as heavy as Black Sabbath in a, in a sort of different way. 
and I like I love the artwork on that as well great photo Japanese obi I think this is sort of second or third uh, Japanese pressing sounds really nice masterpiece one of the best records of all time but two coming in at three so top two top two let's have a little look shall we at number two three now when i bought this record as a kid keep saying it don't i but i just sort of want to sort of say that i've been listening to this band for a long time put on side one it's heavy isn't it let's have a little look at the inside of the gate forward i love this this has got the thing i'm not going to do it now but you sort of spin the spin it round, don't you and you get sort of different little pictures in there but anyway side a immigrant song again what a riff but there's a bit of controversy isn't there that band lucifer's friend had a had a song which sort of sounds it's almost exactly the sound the same riff who did it first we'll never know goes into friends quite a song celebration day another sort of heavy ripper and then since i've been loving you that is my favorite of all their sort of slow bluesy numbers again guitar solo goosebumps and then out on the tiles then you sort of flip it over and it's all these acoustic songs gallows pole that's sort of fast song it's acoustic tangerine beautiful that's the way brawny or stomp sort of about whales and then hats off to roy harper i saw saw i saw roy harper a few times at uh, festivals uh when i when i was sort of uh, used to be a, a, a punk squad and used to play a lot of the free festivals but uh yeah side two used to sort of confuse me uh, when i was a boy i was like what are they playing at acoustic but obviously as i grew older i got to appreciate uh the softer side and i think honestly it's a work of genius gutsy sort of heavy side and then this soft side i think really clever um of course such amazing songwriters they really were i think that's one of the sort of key elements isn't it the the, the caliber of the song Orion all, all catchy all amazing uh, especially just sort of mentioning was like about Sandy Denny the folk influence and then Bert Jansch see even on the first album they would had the Bert Jansch from uh, Pentangle stuff going on so obviously they sort of they loved the folk music didn't they the folk music and uh, they sort of uh, played it to good effect on Led Zeppelin 3 masterpiece another masterpiece Led Zeppelin have a lot of masterpieces don't they and uh, so that's why it's so difficult to rank them well I've come to me number one and you probably know what it is and you might be a bit surprised but for me this is a beautiful record houses of the holy 1973 bit of a cheeky cover i like the gatefold though can we have a look at that oh look at that that's so beautiful work of art isn't it lovely stuff and uh what i love about this album is the sort of the whole mood of the album it just sounds beautiful just i don't know i can't describe it why well, i'm sorry but it really i just love it the song remains the same the rain song it's just a beautiful beautiful song uh over the hills and far away a little bit goofy really but uh and the crunch also a little bit goofy so i'm sort of thinking why the person number one but this is my most played uh led zeppelin record i just love the, the feel of the whole thing but of course they did have to spoil it a little bit with jamaica let's not talk about jamaica dancing days great stomper and of course the haunting no quarter what an amazing song now you know when it goes into that sort of heavier bit i think a lesser band would have put sort of a, a sort of more obvious sort of heavy riff in there but they don't they sort of keep keep it restrained i think it's great it really it's sort of real tension in the song it's so sort of, you you're waiting for it to sort of bust out a little bit more but it does and i think that's amazing it's uh i was gonna say it's a mellotron but 
well synthesized bass it sort of does sound a little bit like a mellotron doesn't it but it's not and then of course final song the ocean so for me as a whole album this is sort of the most enjoyable led zeppelin album for me and the one i play the most and that's why i put it at number one but as i said it could have been any of them really any of the last six could have been at number one but don't take the ranking too seriously now i want to show you a couple of things just to finish off because obviously they're the studio albums we've got the the live albums the song remains the same it's sort of a bit disappointing but honestly these box sets if you haven't heard these especially this one how the west was one this i mean it, unbelievable two live shows uh in la at the forum uh 25th of june 1972 and that's 27th of june 1970 and i love i suppose they asked jimmy page or oh, jimmy can you because jimmy he found the tape didn't he um the i mean unbelievable if i could sort of put if i could include this in that ranking this would be at number one because it's unbelievable but <laughs> it makes me laugh because obviously they sort of asked Jimmy Page to sort of write the liner notes and this is what he said all he said is that while I was searching for visual and audio material for the Led Zeppelin DVD I rediscovered these 1972 performances from the 25th of June LA Forum and 27th of June Long Beach Arena this is Led, this is Led Zepp Zeppelin at its best and an illustration of how the West was won Jimmy Page, London, March 2003. That's it. I love that. A bit cheeky on the. You probably sort of wrote that in two minutes, but you really don't need a lot, a sort of long explanation. I'm not really a big fan of sort of big, long explanation of stuff. But, and also this one, it's the BBC sessions, the complete uh, BBC sessions from the sort of early days, 1969, all from 69 and 71 great box set they sort of me messed up a little bit they put the songs sort of not or the sessions sort of not in the proper order which is a bit disappointed but again there's sort of some versions of communication breakdown on this that a sort of hardcore punk proto hardcore punk they really are well that's it one of the best bands of all time uh geniuses and of course uh jimmy and, and robert and paul are sort of still making music and i've not checked out robert's doing a lot of stuff in africa and stuff like that hasn't he and uh of course john paul jones did the, uh that record with uh what's his name <laughs> what's his name from uh queen to the stone age josh home from queen to the stone age he did that record uh what was it called uh forget doesn't matter and uh that is where i'm gonna leave it today because i'm sort of drifting off a little bit but led zeppelin surely one of the best bands of all time so once again as always thanks for listening thanks for watching give us a little comment go on why don't you go on and uh might make me day so until next time Stay healthy and stay clean.